Hi there, my name is Barnaby and um, I'm going through this book, Rhythm Guitar 365 by Troy Nelson. I'm doing an exercise every day and at the end of every week I'm doing a video where I record all seven exercises and then I upload it to YouTube. Every eight weeks I do one of these talking head videos and talk about the experience of the last couple of months. Now, um, I've been going on this for a while. This is actually the period where I've gone past the halfway point. So this Talking Head session is for weeks 25 to 32. And I'm still finding the book very useful. Um, it's really keeping me honest. It's making me work on my rhythm. It's highlighting things I do badly. One thing I am finding is that there are often a lot of times where my playing is really, really tense. But then when I'm actually practicing a song that, for example, I'm playing for a gig or working with a singer, I can relax and just play naturally. And I found that my rhythm chops have improved and it may not always be evident from actually just watching these videos. Um, but I mean, I have noticed a real difference. So um, what do I want to say aside from that? Um, a couple of points. Uh, one is that I upload these videos to kind of keep myself honest. There's a difference between doing this book, or doing an exercise every day and going, ah, that's good enough, and having it good enough to sort of put on video. I rarely do each exercise perfectly, but I want to be able to do it well enough to show that I kind of understand it and then I can sort of play it in time. There are some exercises which are a bit too fast or a bit too difficult for me to be able to do cleanly, but again, that gives me an idea of what I need to work on and listening back to myself in that way allows me to be self-critical. Um, something though that I have noticed um, and did want to mention is that now when I go back and I look at some of these videos, I've noticed that YouTube have put ads on them. And this is a bit of an issue because, of course, I have uh, never monetized my channel. But YouTube changed their terms of service. And so what they've done is they've said they can now put ads on any video they want. Now, for me, um, because I've always wanted people to be able to watch my stuff, if they ever do, um, without having to worry about those horrible ads, this is disappointing. So now I have to consider what I'm going to do. One option is, if I'm gonna have ads anyway, I may as well monetize my videos. So I'm thinking about that, or maybe I'll move to another platform in the future. I don't really know, I'm mulling it at the moment. But of course, by the time you see this video, I'll probably have made that decision because I record these videos quite a lot in advance. Today, for example, I put week 20 up on YouTube, but I've just finished week 32. So I'm sort of three months in advance. So by the time you see this, I'll probably have made my mind up. Anyway, on to the book. Um, something I've mentioned in these Talking Head videos before, I'll just mention it briefly again, is that the exercises work in four week lumps. So there are seven exercises in a week, and then the next week, you'll get the same exercises just in a different key. That happens four times. And then you switch to a different set of seven exercises. So by the first week, you're kind of figuring out how the exercise works. The second week, it's a bit easier. The third week, it's very easy. The fourth week, it's just extremely familiar. And I love this format. I think it works very well. Okay, so um, the block exercises for weeks 25 to 28. Let's just go through those quickly. Um, the Monday exercise was good fun. It's something that this book does well, which is make you work on the subtleties of palm muting and moving a hand off. So we've got this kind of... So we've got this kind of... Every time you want to do one of these stab chords, you have to lift your hand to let it ring, but you have to do that as well. So you're moving between this palm muting and this kind of opening. And that's a really good discipline. Something I did notice with this is that that is quite hard to do at speed. So what I did is I used that old shredder's trick of kind of angling my pick down, uh, which allowed me to get that speed that I wanted. And that's just a little trick I used. Um, okay, the Tuesday exercises for 25 to 28, they're just a nice Travis picking. And those are very, very useful. 
having this next chord, the diminished chord, um, was actually really interesting. It meant some interesting chord voices and they're good to practice. Um, that's, these are really wonderful. Of course, they're intended as country exercises, but you can use them for folk or whatever. I like the fact that they're now, at the moment, not being swung. So you're not playing, which is very country. You just, which is much more practical and applicable to a wide range of things, sort of stuff that I play. Wednesday, we had this um, rather cute jump blues rhythm. And this was fun because I got to work with pivoting around my thumb. So I got to find kind of the perfect place for my thumb against these fingers so that they could move back and forth efficiently. It was a good little technical thing, you know. And so that was fun. I liked the exercise. Um, the picking was useful. The chord shapes were useful. Um, so lots to love in that. Uh, Thursday we had funk stuff and that meant that I was playing with different ways of fingering chords so that I could transition more easily. For example, you first have to go from this chord, which is an E major chord, to this chord, which is kind of F diminished, and that enables moving lots of fingers. but. If you play the E chord like this, using your uh, third and fourth fingers, then you simply kind of rotate your hand and put down one finger. And that made this a lot easier. So obviously I'm, I'm practicing things like fingering chords differently, depending on which chord is coming next. I mean, we all do that, but it's a useful skill to concentrate on. The scar exercise was nice and straightforward. It was one where you're working on that upbeat rhythm. And that was a really, really useful thing, getting that kind of pluck. And that was great. One issue I have with this is it goes very fast. And when you're doing it at that speed, you know, you are chasing the metronome and getting that smoothness is very hard, especially if you don't want to hit these lower strings. So it's one of those things. It's hard to do well, but it's good discipline. Saturday is your standard jazz stuff. But something I enjoyed about this is that I'm still doing that thing where I pick. chords and then I use these three fingers so pick plus these three fingers and it's quite versatile I'm getting better at it I'm still not great at it I still find it hard with the little finger I don't have the calluses there yet the other issue I find is that these two fingers are much stronger than my little finger so when I play it's very easy to bring out those two middle voices but the top voice tends to get lost so I have to balance, weaken these two fingers and kind of over pull with my little finger. And it means that it leads to quite jerky movements of my hand. I would like to imagine that one of these days I'll get to a point where I can just play very softly and get that voice out very cleanly. But I'm not there yet. It's just going to be time and practice and getting calluses. And I mean, you know, I'm not young, I'm 51 years old, so I don't learn quickly. The Sunday exercises um, from weeks 25 to 28 were the only ones I didn't really like. The exercises themselves, you know, the basic shapes were okay. Again, then we have this. You know, it's a good little finger exercise. That's all fine. The only problem is you have to go from this position here to this position by the time the repeat rolls around. So you're going da 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 boom, and it's really hard to do that accurately and get your fingers in line. It's good practice, but it's probably not something I would do, not a way I would choose to finger this chord if I were playing in a real world situation. So it's something that's a good technical exercise, but not particularly enjoyable to play. It doesn't feel ergonomic or smooth. 
So, those are the exercises from weeks 25 to 28. When we go into week 29, we start to have um, a really nice kind of arpeggio exercise. I love arpeggio exercises. I'm a big fan of that Philip Glass stuff. Um, some of you may have seen videos of me playing that. And I really like this kind of... That's really great, right? And then this lovely... And then that really nice fretted string and open string contrast in that E minor chord. So that's a really lovely thing. And the voicings for these are nice when you move them to different keys. You know, there's one there, for example. Um, there's another one that starts up here and goes all the way up here. So what you're doing is you're basically sweeping. I mean, you could play them as alternate picking, but it's better for the chords to ring through. So the Monday exercises from 29 to 32, I really love. Uh, they make beautiful use of open and fretted strings or open and stopped strings, and they're just beautiful exercises. They're an absolute pleasure. The Travis picking exercises, again, not dotted, which is always good. And the thing about these ones is they worked entirely on bar chords. Right? Let me go. Oh. That's it. Um, and so that is just a useful thing. It, it gives you bar practice, it gives you um, the opportunity to work on you know, accurate fretting here, not letting your fingers collapse so every note rings out. That's a particular issue when you're dealing with, say, seventh chords like this. See how easy it is for your finger to... Right? And so it's just good discipline to make sure that you've got something like... that will allow you to work on notes like this, which often get deadened if you let your fingers collapse a bit. So again, it's just good finger placement discipline, something quite enjoyable. On Wednesday, we have this exercise, which again uses palm muting and opening up the hand a bit. So we've got... Right? Now, the thing is that you can palm mute here, but if you try and palm mute all you'll get is the first note. You see, you won't hear anymore. So. so it forces you to lift that palm off and then plong it down again. Good palm muting discipline, especially when you do it at speed. The Thursday funk exercises were fine. Um, just this voicing. You know, lots of chunky chords um, and then just standard voicing. So we move from this voicing to this voicing to this voicing and then back to So it's a useful little funk exercise. Um, I found that for funk exercises, I tend to go with this flickier pick and I tend to put my Strat in the second to bottom switch setting with a five position switch. It just tends to work better, minimize reverb and that sort of thing. Friday's exercise, okay. This is Scar and it's the same idea of, you know, the upstrokes. But there's a problem. The rhythm is this. Now, you've got that downstroke and then you immediately have to downstroke again. So. This isn't much of a problem when you're doing it at this speed. But when you're doing it at 152, 
very easy for your hand to get turned around and then you get confused and even just a millisecond of going, where am I? The whole thing gets thrown out. Um, so I don't like this exercise. I find it really counterintuitive. It's something I'd need to spend a lot of time on. Um, and I'm not convinced that this is the easiest way to get these sound effects. Um, maybe there are other ways to do this that would, would work more effectively. But I don't know, it's something I would need to revisit. This was the exercise I enjoyed the least in this entire eight week period. I struggled with it for all four weeks from 29 to 32. You'll hear it on the videos and it never sounds good. Even slowly, it doesn't sound right, and I do mess up the picking all over the place. It's just counterintuitive. Okay, Saturday, um, we have again, pick, and these three fingers. Two of my demons here, one is this, you know, having to use this little finger, but also lots and lots of these very high position chords, which do require quite complex and close finger positioning, right? And for me, that's hard because I've got big fingers, I've got big hands. So when we're up here, there's another one where I have to play that in one week, I have to play. And getting that right without this little finger creeping over the fret so I get, or without this root note creeping up or something, Doing that at speed, it's just hard. I also sound very plunky. See? If I was playing it just as I would without a pick, I'd have a much nicer sound. Because I've got much better control of the strings when I'm not using my little finger. I can draw out a much nicer sound. And if I then switch over to a kind of classic jazz tone, really would sound very good. When we go back to the pick, it doesn't sound so nice. It's just there, right? So that's all a matter of control, but it's all stuff to work on. The rhythm finger, uh, the rhythm finger, huh, the rhythm figure um, at, on Sunday is um, kind of fun. It's loose hand playing. Um, so we're doing something like, you know, and that's a really nice little progression, right? I really like that. The, the strumming makes sense. Everything makes sense in this exercise. The only thing that is difficult is going from something like to this at speed, because you're quite fast. go from here. It's very easy, for example, with this chord, which is actually an E minor 7, to move this finger up and accidentally get a Hendrix chord. So that's something you have to be careful about, and there are similar issues with some of the chords in later weeks. But, by and large, this is a fun and useful exercise. And again, anything that makes you concentrate on your finger positions and make you deal with unfamiliar chords is a good thing in my book. So, overall, I'm very happy with the book still. I'm finding some of the exercises are easier than others. Some are more suitable to my playing than others, um, as you'd expect. Being 32 weeks in, this means I'm just over three-fifths of the way, so it looks like I am going to press on through and finish this within my year, which would be really, really nice. I'd be very happy if I can get to that point. Um, probably the biggest challenges for me are things like using this little finger in that hybrid pick finger cording in jazz, but if I can get that down, it would open up a lot of stuff for me. There are a lot of things that I have struggled with in jazz because sometimes I play big blocks of Joe Pass style chords and then I want to play a run. Um, and having a pick would just be really handy, it would just make those runs easier. So being able to work with that a bit, I can see advantages to it. Everything else, just that discipline, that focus on rhythm, 
in every single daily practice session is uh, something that does me good. I'm working, for example, at the moment with a singer and um, we're working on some covers of songs and also some of her originals. And so doing these rhythm exercises has really sharpened me up, has really kind of helped me focus in on making my own rhythm playing more accurate and more idiomatic and more relaxed. So that actually when I will sit down and work with her, I'll get a kind of good groove going. That had always been a problem for me on the guitar. I had lacked groove, whatever groove is. I still struggle with it, but it's starting to develop. Uh, it's an indefinable quality, and yet these exercises are targeting it. So, you know, if I get nothing else out of this book than a few new chord voicings and that sense of groove, then it will have been more than worth the time investment. Okay, I'll see you in another eight weeks. Thank you.